Why is a diet abundant in plant foods so important? Yeah, I like to talk about um, diet in, in terms of sort of the, the, the major things that we humans eat. We are, we're pretty unique as a species because from our teeth to the length of our gut and the type of gut that we have, we're really sort of built for omnivory. So that is eating a wide variety of things. But what we're learning about the microbiome is that what is best for us is when our microbiome is mostly consuming plant foods. So I think we need to take this saying that we've all heard, this phrase, you are what you eat. We really are what our microbiomes are eating. And our microbiomes can eat anything down in our colon, plant foods, animal foods, what have you. But because of the metabolites that our microbiome makes in our colon, we get very beneficial um, metabolites coming off of plant foods. Because when the fiber of plant foods and the phytochemicals that are embedded in that fiber, when that's fermented in, in our gut, these compounds that our microbiome is making are then what our body needs. With meat, it's looking like what happens is, is especially on a meat-heavy diet, someone who is just occasionally eating meat, this likely is not a problem, but a typical Western diet, which contains a lot of meat, undigested protein, because it's sort of overwhelmed our small intestine with, with digestion um, processes, it descends down into the colon incompletely digested. It's protein. And a protein is very different than a complex carbohydrate to a, to a bacterium. And when, when meat proteins are digested, different kinds of metabolites come out of our microbiome than when they're digesting plant foods. And what it's looking like is that the metabolites that come off of meats are um, harmful in some way or toxic to cells lining our colon. So that, that is, is likely, um, there's, there's research and evidence that points to colon cancer and the connection to meat being not so much the meat as what the microbiome is producing when it is consuming meat. It just, you know, bacteria are just kicking waste products off after they consume what is in our diet. So they don't have any, you know, any intention to be, you know, good or bad or harmful or beneficial. They're just getting energy based on what our diet is. And so if we are not careful, we are sort of turning our onboard medicine chest into sort of an onboard problem chest. And what, what you know, our bodies are really resilient and we have many processes that can sort of push back on these toxins in our body. But as soon as you overwhelm any system with too much of a toxic environment, it just becomes very hard for, um, for our bodies to get, you know, sort of back where they need to be. But that is the basic, that, that in a nutshell is why it's really important to think about these different parts of our digestive tract and what our microbiome is producing, um, you know, in our colon, beneficial things or harmful things. We've all heard phrases like, go with your gut, and had the experience of feeling relaxed and happy after a nice meal. Is there any connection to the microbiome? Yes, I think so. Um, when any organism is well fed, it's gonna function properly and it's gonna function normally. So if we're eating, you know, three meals a day, not really big meals, our microbiome is getting, you know, a steady stream of nutrients, Abundant, uh, abundant in plant foods. That means our microbiome is producing these compounds that are then leaving our gut and uh, interacting with other systems in our body, whether that be um, our brain, our central nervous system. I'd mentioned before the, the transmitter, the neurotransmitter serotonin. When that's at ample, steady supply, our brain is functioning normally we're in a good mood. 
So you want your microbiome to be, to be well fed and satiated, if you will, because when it is, it, it activates and is interacting with other parts of our body that then can function normally. And, and we all know that when something is amiss, we're either hungry or we're sick or we're dealing with some kind of stress, our gut is also upset. And so I, uh, there's a reason people also call our gut um, kind of our second brain because we don't often, we just think about it in terms of food and diet, but because of all of the, the communication and the signaling between our gut microbiota and our immune system, our nervous system, our circulatory system, and so on, it, we know that, that when you're feeding, you're eating a diet that is nourishing and, um, and consistent for the microbiome, Things are just going to be, you know, humming and thrumming along just like they should. And so there is evidence, I think, um, for all of this. And some say, some evolutionary biologists even think, well, maybe it goes back, you know, way back that these hitchhiker microbes um, found their way from, from nature out there. We picked them up from the soil. Um, from the ground we walked on, from the water we once drank out of rivers and streams. And if you think about it, little tiny bacterium, our body is a pretty safe place compared to the nature that is outside of our bodies. Inside our bodies, some of these microbes have figured out um, ways to form symbiotic relationships with our, with our cells, with our biochemistry, with our metabolism. And so it kind of stands to reason, they're happy and well-fed, they're gonna keep doing the things that hold up their side of the partnership. And for that, they rely on us to hold up our side of the partnership, which is you know, a diet um, abundant in plant foods. Is that well-known saying, you are what you eat, accurate? If not, how would you change it? Yeah, I think, I think at a gut level, everybody realizes, yeah, I know my diet affects my health. I know at some level I am what I eat. And what this new area of science is telling us is that it's, it's a little more complicated than that. It, it's telling us that um, our brain is selecting food, but it's also telling us that what happens to that food is bringing another player into, um, into this, this sort of environment, into this notion of you are what you eat. And that other player, of course, is our microbiome. Our microbiome um, cannot get up, leave our bodies, go off to a restaurant, and come back in. It's stuck, for better or worse, our microbiome is stuck with us and we are stuck with our microbiome. And because of all of the microbial metabolites that they produce that I talked about before, we really are what our microbiome eats. And this, we can sometimes tussle with our microbiome and with ourselves because our brain, our brain loves sugar. And so we find ourselves um, in a grocery store, at a restaurant, and the brain is, is scanning the dessert menu. If the microbiome were there by our side on the table, it would say, be scanning the vegetables too. So we, we sometimes get in this, this uh, our brain pushes us one way, and our gut, if we could listen to it, would be pushing us another way. And so we all, we all, we all do this. And so the way I sort of deal with that, I'm like, okay, what, what is, yeah, I know brain, I know, I know, you'd, you'd like to have this or that. But then I stop and I ask myself, have I fed my microbiome today? And if I haven't, I say, okay, brain, hold off. We're gonna feed the microbiome and then you can have what, what you'd like. Not, not a bunch of it, not every day, but kind of everything in moderation because I'm really more interested in um, supporting my microbiome biome than I am in sort of succumbing to the, the big power of the brain. In your book, The Hidden Half of Nature, you draw some important parallels between the human gut and the root system of a plant. What are they and why are they significant? What's interesting when it comes to the root 
and when it comes to the gut is that we now know that the lion's share of our respective microbiome, so the human microbiome and the plant microbiome. In the botanical world, most of the microbiome is on or inside of the root system of a plant. And when it comes to us, of course, our microbiome, most of it is in our digestive tract. And as, as I've discussed before, most of it is in the colon. So right away, you get those two facts and you line them up and you're like, hmm, why would that be? And it has to do with nutrients. It has to do with th these microorganisms, which are these, you can think of them as micro ecosystems. And one of those ecosystems is in the gut and one of those ecosystems is in, in and around the roots of a plant. So there's all of this nutrient processing and exchange going on between the plant and its root microbiome and us and our gut microbiome. And the kinds of things that happen, um, for example, in the botanical world is the root microbiome consumes exudates. Exudates are things that the plant's green body manufactures. And like that word sort of sounds, they exude out of the roots. They ooze, they flow out of the roots into this like nano micro space right at the surface of a root. And these microorganisms are consuming these exudates. It sounds a lot like our meals. It consists of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And those kind of foods are unique if you're a bacterium living in the soil, and they are only to be found in these plant exudates. And what the plant is getting when it feeds these exudates to the microorganisms is it's getting in return things like plant growth promoting hormones. Not made in the plant's body, made in the soil by the root microbiome. So a plant needs these hormones for normal growth and development. So and in our body, there's many metabolites that our microbes are producing in our gut. I've talked about a couple of them. Butyrate is really important in the colon. Serotonin really important for our central nervous system. So what you have are these sort of twin systems. It's these exchanges of, of goods. They're sort of like, think of it like biological bazaars. Bazaars are, are zones of intense trading for goods. I give you this thing, you give me that thing. And that's what's going on in the root in the gut. And so when everything is working properly, high functioning, you get a really healthy plant and you also get a really um, healthy person. And so you, you string all of this together, the nutrients, the microbial metabolites that come off of these um, nutrients, the fact that plants and people use these metabolites as a part of our um, immune and defensive strategy, you add those three things up and it really comes to a form of, of nature's intelligence or biological intelligence, right? Because what more are we than, you know, we need, we need to eat, we need to stay alive, and we need to procreate. And that's what the microbiome helps, helps us and helps plants do. And it makes, it makes sense at some level if you think about the trajectory of human evolution and how long um, we have been around, you know, several hundred thousand years, a couple hundred thousand years. And way back then, we didn't have any pharmaceutical companies. We didn't have any agrochemical companies. We didn't, of course, have any stores. Commerce wasn't really a thing. And so what we had was nature. What we had was our microbiome. And that is what has you know, kept us going all of this time that we have been on this earth. And it's only been fairly recently, you know, let's say maybe the, the last 200 years or so, that modernity has brought many other things into our bodies, into our lives. Much of it is good, but some of it is maybe not quite so good for our microbiome. So what we want to think about is how do we support these systems? Because really, whether you're a plant or you're a person, your microbiome, so long as you feed it the right things, is, is this onboard medicine chess and defense system, and it's just sort of all around well-being. Could you sum up the main message of the hidden half of nature in 10 words or less? <laughs> I can, because I've thought about this a lot. Um, 
this interview has been a lot of information. Our talks contain a lot of information about all this. And so if you're watching this now and later you decide, I've got to tell somebody about this, but where do I start? We've boiled it down to six words, and here they are. Mulch your soil inside and out. Thank you.